Lesson 25, Entering Jesus' Kingdom In today's lesson, we shall learn more teaching from Jesus that tells us about his return someday. Once again, Jesus uses parables to teach us about what his coming will be like. These parables in today's lesson are designed to warn us to be waiting, ready, and busy doing his work so we can be ready for his return. The first parable is about ten virgins. We are told that five of the virgins were wise and five were foolish. The virgins were waiting for the return of the bridegroom, but because the time was late, they all fell asleep while waiting for him to come. These were friends of the bridegroom who waited for him to return after going to the home of the bride to collect his bride and bring her to his own home. They would hear the news that he was returning with his bride and they would go out to meet him and escort the procession into the bridegroom's home. Unfortunately, five of the virgins in our story ran out of oil and asked the others to share some of theirs, but the wise ones who had prepared themselves with extra oil were not willing to share theirs unless they also ran out of oil. They counseled the foolish ones to go and buy their own oil But while they went to buy oil, the bridegroom had already come and entered into his house, and the doors were shut. When the foolish cried, Lord, Lord, open to us, the answer came back, I do not know you. The lesson of this parable is that we should be prepared for the coming of the Lord, who is coming to take his bride back to heaven, that is, his church. Those who have sufficient oil speaks to us of those who are true Christians and have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. These are the ones who are prepared to go with the Lord when he comes from heaven because they have received the Lord Jesus as their Savior. The foolish virgins picture for us those who are not true Christians, but they think they are. They are just like the other virgins in every way except they lacked enough oil, which is an illustration of the Holy Spirit. We know they are fake Christians, for we see them left outside and crying to the Lord to let them in. But he replies, I do not know you. The key to salvation is a personal relationship to Jesus Christ by faith. And if you do not know him personally in your life, then you are like one of these foolish virgins who was left outside. The next parable is about a man who travels but leaves some money with his servants to look after until he returns. He gives each one according to his ability. And so one man receives five talents, another two, and the last one receives one talent. The servant who received the five talents traded with the money and managed to make another five talents with his master's money. Also the one with two talents doubled the money that was entrusted to him. But the man with one talent went and hid the talent in a hole in the ground. When the master returned, a long while later, the servant with five talents returned the five talents with the additional five talents he had gained, and likewise the servant with two returned the gains he had made. But the man with one talent returned the one talent without any gain. The master was pleased with the first two servants and invited them into the joy of their Lord and gave them greater responsibilities. The servant who did not make any gains was rebuked by the master saying he was a wicked and lazy servant and he was cast into outer darkness. The parable teaches us again about those who are genuine believers and those who have produced spiritual fruitfulness in their lives contrasted with those who are not genuine believers, who in the end produce nothing of spiritual value. Those who were able to make some gains with the money the Master left them picture for us what the Christian life is to be like. Christians receive bountifully from the Lord and according to their abilities are expected to produce some fruit for God. This means that they should grow up in Christ, become more like Christ, and help serve the body of Christ and lead souls to Christ. If they cannot produce anything for Christ, then it means they never were true Christians. If you planted some seeds and waited patiently for the plant to grow, but it never grew and never produced any fruit, then you would come to the conclusion that the seeds had no life in them. The same is true of people who say they are Christians, but never bear any spiritual fruit. The final story here is not really a parable, but an account of what it 
will actually be like when the Lord returns to earth in judgment. With all the nations before him, he will separate the people like a shepherd dividing his sheep from his goats. These animals are different, but all mixed together. So when the Lord comes, there will be a mixture of two types of people, those who are true followers of Christ and those among them who are false. He will bring his true followers to his right hand, which is the place of honor and privilege, and the false professors will be placed on the left awaiting his judgment. The righteous on his right hand are rewarded according to their many acts of kindness done to him, which he recounts to them. They were surprised by this, for they did not recognize when they had done these kindnesses for him. But he tells them that as much as you have done it to the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. When he speaks in judgment against those on his left, he tells them that they never served him in any way the kindnesses that those on the right had done. Therefore these were cast into the fires of hell, prepared for the devil and his angels, our demons. What we learn from this is that our works show the reality of our faith. If we are willing to serve the needs of others in the church, it means the Holy Spirit living inside has guided us into spiritual fruitfulness. When our lives do not produce good works to serve the needs of others around us, it shows that we are not genuine believers. This is a good test to see if we are really saved or not. All three of these teachings about the Lord's return show us that there will be a separation between those who are true believers and those who are not, and it is based upon whether a person has the Holy Spirit and how they produce spiritual fruitfulness. If you have no fruit, then you do not have the Holy Spirit. Today I hope you will be wise and ask Jesus to be your Savior, and so prepare yourself for his return. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Matthew chapter 25 verse 13